Oh, you got a clear road, dude. Give her the beans. The beans. I see trader drifting. Whoa, I think oh, we're we are spinning tower. The trader's going <laughs> sideways. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the brand new 2019 Chevy Silverado, and this is the 5.3 liter. As you can tell, we have it hooked up to a trailer. So coming up right now, we're gonna do a classic TFL compared video because right here we've got Mr. Truck. And what's under the hood of this hey. Chevy Silverado? Ah, one of my favorite engines, a 6.2 with a 10 speed. Now both these trucks have a 323 axle ratio. That one only has an eight speed. So let's take them for a ride and see how they tow. Yes, yeah, 6,000 pounds up the mountain. Now this powerhouse, the 6.2, one of my favorite engines, has 420 horsepower and 460 foot-pounds of torque. And it's made it to a 10-speed. And it's also rated to tow in the right configuration, 12,200 pounds. Now we're gonna show you some cool things about what they've done new with Trader Towing with GM. Now the 5.3 puts out 355 horsepower and 383 pound-foot of torque and it can only be mated to a 6 or in this case an 8-speed automatic transmission. Highest towing that you can do with this truck in the right configuration is 11,600. Okay, this is the sticker for the 5.3 on this 2019 Silverado, and it shows a maximum tongue weight of 960. That translates to a 9,600 pound trailer. The one with the 6.2 Silverado, it was 930 and 9,300. So this one has actually got a higher trailer capacity rated on this truck right now. And that's because of the weight of the engine on that 6.2. It's a heavier engine and it's a 10 speed, a heavier transmission. So now you know how all that works. So this tells you this exact truck, what it will tow, what the rear axle weight rating, what the gross vehicle weight rating is, what the curb weight, all that stuff you've been wanting to know without having to go look it up. Chevy flew us out here to Wyoming to tow. <laughs> so we want to make sure that we are indeed towing 6,000 pounds. So let's see what's in the back of the trailer, Ken. Do you think it's dead horses or what do you think? Well, I just don't want it to be popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks like we're towing uh, Quick Crete. But is it indeed Quick Crete or is there a popcorn in there? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's concrete. They got the wet center over the axles. I guess they know what they're doing. First time towing in the brand new Silverado. This is a big deal. A new Silverado yeah. doesn't come along every day. I know, I know. And it's, you know, both of these, this has the 8 speed, the other one we're going to drive has a 10 speed, and they have changed how the tow haul mode works. Besides being on a knob now, which is quite a bit different than the stem, this also actually will raise your RPMs when you're going downhill and using tow haul mode and braking and shifting. It'll hold an RPM, of course, hold the gear longer, but that's uh, what they've changed on this. They've really gotten big on trailers this year. I mean, they, they'll tell you so much information. We, we just talked about the tag and the door. My gosh, this is wonderful because of all those numbers you can't really get anywhere unless you do a lot of research on the web. Yeah, you know, I mean, trucks have always been tools. <laughs> kind of sounds wrong, but sounds it's true. <laughs> but now they're uh, especially treated like tools by Chevy. It's nice to see that. And you got tow haul mode on? Yes, I do. I have tow haul mode on. I've got my lights on in case we haven't plugged a trailer plug. So we're good. We're up here in a beautiful, is this the Titans, the Titans, the Tetons? Yes. Something like it. that. Yeah, you're close <laughs> and you got it the third time. So let's merge onto the highway here and maybe go left and see just how much power it has, right? Because we want to see if it's uh, got enough power to uh, tow this 6,000 pounds. And admittedly, 6,000 pounds is well below this truck's capability. That's true. We're not really going to strain this truck at all. We are going to go uphill, so that's a good test. That's a good test, but we're going to have to wait till we get it on the eye gauntlet to really push it. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, what do you think of the driving position? It's changed. The driving position? Yeah, the steering wheel used to be Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, for decades they had it angled toward the door and it drew me nuts. The seat was off, too. And I, it's really hard for me pulling trailers to ever get comfortable with looking out the floor mirrors. Floor it, dude, floor it. it. Give it the beans. We need to drift this trailer. There's a couple of beans in there, not the whole batch. 
I agree with you. <laughs> I'm going to give it a half bag of beans. <laughs> it shifts so smooth. Even that eight speed, it shifts so smooth. And if that D-cylinder, that active, you know, part that de deactivates cylinders, it goes down to two if it has to, but it is so seamless, and you don't get the little V4 light on the dash anymore. No. So it just works, and I guess you're going to be confident in that because you have no idea. Unless you're in Kansas, you know you're probably running on force. All right, so um, I know we're doing a comparison, but I think we should also do a little bit of a review of the truck. So let me talk about the things that immediately I think need a little improvement. First is the seat. The seat cushion is just a little too short. I, I feel like I don't have enough like thigh support. You've got long thighs, huh? I do. I think that's <laughs> that's number one. And number two, the steering wheel is a little too thin. I would like to see something a little bit meatier. When I've got a big truck, I want a big steering wheel. You like that baseball bat from Ram, don't you? I like the fat <laughs> steering wheel. And this is a thing. This might be a preference thing, but yeah. you know, those are the two things that immediately strike me. And the third thing is the infotainment system. Now you know, Ram of course came out with basically two. Oh gosh, they're like iPads stuck yeah. on top of each other. This is an 8 inch screen. It feels a little 1999 ish. Right, and it does have the same kind of look we're used to, but I love the big knobs. I like a knob on the fan. I hate sitting there trying to push a button driving down a bouncy road, but I like the layout and we're used to it. So I suppose they leave some of the old in there so you don't think you're totally in a different vehicle. Yeah, and let me talk about what I like about it. Over the hood, you've got this great view of this uh, really big and kind of meaty hood. I like that. I like the fact that there's a lot more room in here, right? Three inches in the cabin. That's a lot yeah, of space. Yeah. You could put that seat all the way back and there'd still be room for me to sit behind you. Yeah, that's really nice because that back seat has always been small, even in a crew cabin. They've always been a little smaller. And now they're all getting up there where they put big adults to sit in the back. You can sleep back there. It's awesome. Now this too, uh, Tommy was telling me that if you were to get that max towing package on these trucks, it comes with that fiberglass bottom overload. Is that what you said, Tommy? Yeah. So that's the only way you can get that. So I guess, I'm not still don't understand what the value of that overload is for towing, but uh, I guess we'll find out. So let me ask you this. You like the placement of the brake controller? I love it. It's over there and it's, you know... On your right. Yes. It's been such a long time. I mean, decades. I've been complaining to Ram, and I'm not Ram, complaining to Chevy, and they told me they were going to move it years ago, like 2011. They didn't do it. They moved the engineer somewhere else. So then they moved the brake controller up, which was an improvement, but still wasn't where you can react the fastest over here. I mean, I used to always tell them, you find me a semi, the brake controller for the trailer, on the right side, and I'll stop complaining. Well, they never could find one. Yeah, so I like that. I don't like the fact that the push button start is right by my knee right now, or right by your knee. It seems like you could hit that by accident. Well, maybe. Maybe if, if you have a lot on your knee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is inside a little bit. But, you know, this is cool on the left side, though. Your four, it used to be the two. The four drive knob and the light knob were the same exact thing almost. Right. And I would always get those confused. Now it's all set up different. Your tow all mode is over there, which has a sport mode. All those cool things are in the knob. I love this little gadget. You've seen this little gadget here? Yeah. It rolls. I yeah. love it. And then the guy went over there and does a little bit. This rolls all over the place. I think that is just so cool. Let's talk about uh, towing. So, you know, Best in class are three big words that all the manufacturers like to compete for. And this has best in class bed width. Inside. Inside, yeah. yeah. But it doesn't have best in class towing numbers for its Stallone zones. Right, right. And it, it's, it's something about Jim's philosophy. They don't want to be the top towing, max towing percentage or weight. I guess they don't think that's necessary. And I understand that. I mean, that's how they think. They all have a different view of towing. You know, it's like uh, making love, right? It's not the size, but the motion in the ocean, right? Is that what that is? Yeah, it's that's not the what size. she said. Yeah. That's, that's kind of GM's <laughs> approach, right? Okay. It's not the size of the boat, but it's, and they, they're all about control, right? They want you to have control, and they want you to be comfortable, and they don't want you to be fatigued when you're towing. Uh, that's great, but it doesn't make for great commercials. Right, and that's true. A lot of people, they want the number one numbers in all those different categories, but, you know, the trailer inside of it, I understand. I understand even on their gooseneck side of it somewhat, because you know you got to have the trailer brakes catch up, catch up to the truck capacity. You know, there's so many things you could do wrong by towing too heavy of a trailer. So it's it's really hard for me to totally discount them. Yeah, they're not the biggest or the best, but there you go. So how does it tow? Well, it's towing fine. I mean, even without a weight distributing hitch, <laughs> okay, <laughs> which this should have, it's six thousand pounds. But yeah, I'm not swaying. I mean, they've done a lot. Of the suspension has always been great on these. I think they've always been the best handling trucks and the best steering trucks. But uh, you know, they haven't lost that. 
They've added some more safety features. I think this will be better in the National Highway Safety Administration crash test. But what is good is just how remarkably composed and quiet this truck is, right? Oh, it is quiet. Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, towing up a relatively steep grade uh, with 6,000 pounds, so you can barely hear that engine. That's true. That's true. It's uh, it's comfortable. It, it tows well, you know, and, and we're not having any problems controlling this, this little trailer. But, yeah, the, the next thing we're going to find out when they tell us is about the towing mirrors. I want to know. I want to know what the new towing mirrors. They are making one, but you, know, you look at this one now. The pedestal frame is in the door. Yeah, they're longer, and you have a little bit less line, blind spot on this side right by the mirror. This is a new button. We don't even know what it does. It looks like it's a bunch of windows and shows going down. Watch. Let's see what happens. Holy cow, all four of them went down. I guess that's in case you're on fire, the smoke will go out. I have no idea why you need that, but that's cool. I guess if you're hotter, you know, you want the kids to jump out the window, you push that button. It right? can't, will it all go up? Try it. No, no, it's a manual up, so it's some kind of an emergency thing, I think. I think it's just a cool way to open cool all the windows. Cool way to open all the yeah. windows at once? Uh, the Hummer used to have that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So my name is Scott Damon, I'm lead development engineer uh, for the new 2019 Silverado. With our new trailering app um, is to make the experience that much better. So overall, being able to connect and understand how to connect, uh, being able to see what you're, what's happening with your trailer inside the cab, the overall trailering experience is better. Let's talk about the cameras, because yep. you've added those. Where do you have cameras? So there's actually a camera right here, this is our backup camera. Yep. Uh, normal backup, so you put the truck in reverse on the center screen. This truck does not have it, but the full view mirror camera actually lives on the back of the cab, which is a great place to put it because there's very little road debris that goes up there. When you have a truck that has 360 camera, you get a camera in each mirror that's looking down and then a camera in the front as well looking forward. Uh, certain trucks actually can have a camera that can connect into a connector here that would actually go in your trailer or on the back of your trailer so you can actually see that on the center stack as well. And I think there's cameras underneath the Correct. Mirror. Yeah, right here there's cameras. Um, so this truck, this is actually just task lighting in this truck, but uh, when you have it with the 360 camera, you get a camera there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Kent, we are now in the big boy 6.2 liter. Yeah. What used to be actually the most powerful engine, best in class, until Ford announced that for 2019, they're going to put the Raptor engine <laughs> into the Limited, which now right. makes it the most powerful engine. Ironically, this one actually tows less than the 5.3 because... The weight of the engine and yeah. the weight of the transmission. Yeah. Now this is the first year of the 10 speed though, isn't it? In the 6.2? Yes. So that's an advantage and that's... The engineer was telling me about the towing sequence on this. You know, first two gears are really low because the gears are close together and you got 10 of them. And this one, just like the last one, they have actually changed tow haul mode to where it'll hold a little higher RPM and a little longer. Yeah, so can you tell a difference? Well, let's wait till we get on the highway. Let's do our giving it the beans again and see how many beans a 6.2 gives it versus the 5.3. And we we're about 7,000 feet above sea level, as I recall. Yeah, we're pretty high up here in Wyoming. Oh, you got a clear road, dude. Give her the beans! The beans! Let's see trader drifting. Whoa! I think oh, we're we are spinning tower! The trader's <laughs> going sideways! Yeah! Whoa! There's some power. Yeah, this one gave us a lot more beans. <laughs> this is a this is like a full bag of beans with it. <laughs> when the rear yeah. wheel starts spinning, it's a lot yeah. of beans. Yep, it's got the power. I love this. And you can hear the engine? Yes. And now you know there's no when you're listening to the exhaust note outside the truck. You know, there's all these things that are not letting it wrap up. Now we can wrap it up and it sounds wonderful. Even though it's a quiet truck, you can hear that V8 thunder. Yeah, we should compare it to the other trucks in its class. So obviously the two biggest competitors are the Ram 1500, which has a Hemi, which actually has less power. Yeah. But they're coming out with a new uh, mild hybrid. Right. Uh, we're going to be driving that actually very soon as well. So stay tuned for that. And of course, Ford has the EcoBoost 3.5. Now, if you get it with the Raptor engine, it's going to blow everybody off out of the water because right. that's going to be the most powerful. But GM has some really innovative engines coming, and that's going to be later this year. They've got the six-cylinder straight-six diesel. Yes. And get this, a four-cylinder turbo. Doesn't tow a heck of a lot, about 7,500 pounds. Yeah, but, but which isn't bad for a four-cylinder. But still, it'll be the only four-cylinder full-size truck on the market. So there's a lot coming. Of course, there's Toyota um, Nissan, they both have a half ton, only two engine choices in those. Right, I'm being interested in how the public reacts to a four cylinder and a full size truck. So you think that the 6.2 uh, is a little bit better towing this trailer, going up this hill? Yes, 
Yes, even with the same axle ratio, more horsepower, more torque, all the stuff you need. Of course, 6,000 pounds isn't a lot of weight for a truck with 460 pound foot of torque, 420 horsepower, so we're not really stressing oh, this thing out. In 10 gears, it can always find the right gear that way. It's Yeah, it's nice. And we're running 1,800 RPM, which also helps your fuel mileage. So let, let me talk about one of my favorite features in this truck. We talked about other features. This one has this cool feature where it's got a phone charger. Uh, I love that. <laughs> Just put it down there and... Uh, phone starts charging itself. Towing mirrors, right? Which yeah. this doesn't have. Right, and that's the difference too. This truck is basically six foot wide, maybe six foot two wide. The trailer is eight and a half feet wide, so I'm never in a trailer, and that's why I need towing mirrors, and they say it's coming. We don't know what it looks like. We don't know what they cost. We don't know anything about them, but that's what you need. Just look at me. I'm looking at the side. I see the front of the trailer. I cannot see even halfway back on the trailer. So I, I, that's what trailer toy mirrors are all about. And that's why we use those aftermarket when we're using yeah, the Yeah, I hate those. I hate They're those ugly, things. but they work, and we're trying to be safe. They're really clunky. So I can be ugly and safe, you know. Yeah, but, but. those are really clunky. They, you know, they stick on with, like, <laughs> suction cups. It's not a good solution. <laughs> I asked the engineer, you know what the biggest fuel tank you can get on this? Well, it's not 30. <laughs> it's not 30, no. I think it's uh, 26 gallon. Which that's not enough. That doesn't seem like a lot. I think with the 8-foot bed, you can get a 28 gallon tank, but you can get a 38 gallon tank in a Tundra. Yeah, what, what's two gallons? Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, you need a bigger, if you're going to tow trailers, if that's what their aim is. Heavy trailers. Heavy trailers, if they're going to, you know, hit the trailer market like they're doing, that's one thing they've got to address, a bigger tank. you got to have a bigger tank. Yeah, 26 gallons of the standard truck is just not big enough in my opinion. Uh, time will tell, but I'm, I predict that within a year, there'll be a bigger fuel tank in this Silverado. All right, Kent, 59,000, 54,000, and that's, of course, before rebates, which we know sure. will eventually come. <laughs> but if this were your money, which one would you get? Hey, I love this 6.2, and I want a 10-speed. No, this is the only choice for me. Really? Yes. I'm partial to the 5.3. I think I love the sound of it. I think it's plenty of power, and it's got more payload, dude, so... Hey, I'll get the max tow with the 342 rear end, then I'll be able to tow anything with this. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, check out tfltruck.com for more news, views, and, of course, real-world reviews. And Kent? MrTruck.com. Heck yeah, check that out. And get his take on both of these trucks. See you guys next time. Ciao.